Hey guys! M12 Warthog here. Back with another video. And today, I am on a creative plot and a server because that's going to be easier on my potato PC to record this. But, I'm on a creative plot, and well, as you can see behind me, from my old videos that I used to do back when I had a 360 version of this, well, um, you know I like to do redstone stuff. I mean, I'm on top of a house that has a few glowstone in for light and whatnot, in a small room. Let's see, uh, let's go down here. Aw, oh, man! It says epic loot on that sign, I should get it. The door's not opening. But I'm in creative, so I can easily break through it. Well, let's just assume that you're not. Well, how do I get through it? Well, most of you would know that I know how to make a combination lock. And that makes sense. But there's a lot of stuff here that doesn't. And we're going to go over that. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a combination lock that's better than before. Okay. So, you see a lot of repeaters, redstone everywhere, stuff. Well, the premise is still simple. You still make the vertical nor latches, you still have the reset switch, and you kind of have some form of an enter button. In this case, it's a lever so that it stays open, so you can hit this, walk over here in time, and get the epic loot. Now, Here's how it works. The basic premise is, is that all the nor latches, vertical nor latches, have to be activated in order to set it off the code correctly. It will send a signal to this inverter here, which will then make this will turn red, lit up, and then with the AND gate, with the additional out input needed from the enter code, it essentially acts like you're entering code. It goes in here, boom, you open the door. So before the first version I said you could do up to 1 through 9, I guess you could also include 0 if you want to add that in. And the way I built it sucked because you could only do one of each number. So theoretically you could go back and forth and hit it 10 times, all the buttons, 10 times in a row. All the way from 0, all the way up to 9. Again and again and again, 10 times, and you'd practically guarantee... At that point, because of the built-in weakness, that you'd open the door. Well, there's an easy fix around that if you want to just hook up an AND gate. Not an AND gate, sorry. A uh, breadstone clock. Hook it up to the reset latch, which I could easily do if I wanted to. And it reset it every so often to prevent people from just randomly trying to guess the code. That's an option. Although, typically, redstone clocks lag out servers, lag out your game, and a lot of other things if you don't have a good PC. But there's other ways. You could have that and have what I have here. Multiple uses of a single digit. So you can have multiple fives in your combination lock or multiple sixes. The way I've done this is I've essentially made one row of nor latches all have to be activated in order. The first ten being from zero to nine. And then uh, over here, some of them are, again, uh, the one right in front of it. Some of them are both. In this case, as you can see this here, you have one here. And that goes here, and then one goes there. So at every single point, in between inch nor latch, the redstone signal when signaling will not activate the first one and the second one at the same time even if we didn't have the repeaters here to block the signal from going backwards or forward the first time you say activate uh one i have it here i have zero at the end there it activates this one this one is active this one is linked to i believe this nor latch here. This vertical nor latch 
is not activated despite the fact that I've activated this one. The reason for it is that you can see here it has to go in order. So this determines your combination line. So I do not have to have once it finishes this row, then it to be to go down the line again, but in opposite order. It's more or less the order that the nor latches are in doesn't matter. It's a matter of which the order in which the buttons that have the numbers labeled on them are linked up to the nor latch. So if the second, if the button labeled two is linked up to the second nor latch, then the second number in the code is two. If you have the second, uh, if you have this button labeled two that is hooked up to the second and eighth nor latch, well then it's the second, two is the second and eighth digit in the combination, and so forth. So, as you can see here, this greatly expands your capability of this, and if you plan on making, like, a adventure map of some kind where you fight a boss at the end but you need the code into the evil layer and you can only use one number each time or maybe you want to use a specific number well you can do that now typically you don't want to have the same number twice in a row because i just activated it here and here so that technically counts as one digit when entering it in because it will set them both off. But if they're not right next to each other, like uh, having two be the second and, second and eighth number like I used before, they won't set off at the same time. So now I can go back and it will now activate this one, but it didn't before. As you can see, that's the same thing here. And as you can see here, this one is powered, but it's not available. Now, typically, what I can do to avoid that is I could... Even if I put that in there, let's just say that repeater, it still looks powered. And that redstone, even if... Even if they're not going to the same... Even if it's connected from two different things going to different nor latches. So that there's a little tidbit of information. Like you can have this branch off and have it be like eight different like uh digits for your combination down here. It's still gonna be lit up, the redstone, but it still carrying a signal, even if you put in repeaters, but it won't activate unless it's in order. Obviously, that's how it works. I'm going to hit this one now. And that one, that one goes there. Has a repeater to fall back onto so that the signal doesn't dissipate. And that is kind of important. So now that one's set off, then we need to go over here for the next one. And now I'm just going to uh, constantly try and set this one off. I'm going to quickly just try and focus on setting this off. If you can see where these are linked up to, it's pretty easy to figure out which one's which. Generally. It's also great if you want to have people have like a bunch of glass plates above this. And try and figure out the code yourself. It's actually quite fun. As you learned, this is linked up to that. And then, of course, for the last two. It's there. All right. I just realized. There, there's an easy fix for that. Okay, so remember here, I literally just realized this as recording. So you realize that as I have this one as a zero... And this one has zero, and they both set off at the same time. They want it registered that this one has been active, the previous one has been active if you put in enough repeaters. And you see, some of these are together, and I have, for the last two, I have like two at maximum delay 
two two redstone repeaters. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is how you can make a combination lock better than the one I did years ago back on Xbox 360. You can use a digit one through okay from zero through nine more than once. You can have more than 10 digits. You have more customization. And don't forget the redstone clock that I mentioned that you can hook up. And it has to hook up to the reset latch. Now, I'm not sure. I haven't tested it if it should go here or any parts. But I do know that if you put it here, I mean, so it hooks up to the redstone in between the reset latch. Because this would already be carrying a signal if you want to reset it. So this would just reset reset it normally. I don't know if you hook it up to any other parts. But hey, would you look at that. The door is now open. I got the loot. Now, I already pretty built this. But it's pretty easy. I'm going to go over, now that I've given you an overview, of the basics on how to do it. So pretty simple for the... Pretty simple, you just label it whatever. You can even label these as letters and have it be a password. Like, I redstone is the best or whatever, I don't know. That's going to be pretty long to figure out because you're going to walk all the way down for like one letter all the way back. It's possible, but I mean, it's more so about security. So obviously, you can label your reset and have it go into a reset switch. It's pretty simple to build. If you just go here, here. And this one's a little bit different. You have this one here. And practically, this is the framework for all of your switches. Just a matter of a few placements of redstone torches that make the difference. So you see here, this is a vertical, or my halfway through making a vertical nor latch. So I place a redstone here, redstone here, and a repeater. Do note, repeaters do go in the direction that you're facing. And I keep this at a good delay. All right, so as you can see, all these are there, right? And now I'm gonna hit the reset latch, and it resends the it swaps because here's the thing: each one of these will have a signal coming on the top. You just need to deactivate it and let that go down the line. Then, of course, you when you wanted to actually output a signal, you just Put it near the inverter like I have here. Pretty simple. So that's how you make the reset latch. Now the for the vertical nor latch you're going to need to make. You're going to need to do this. The button is just there to show you that it resets. You can put it like this with the switch I have. It's not a big deal. And one too many. Alright, you put one here course and then you put one there and then the rest is just redstone however there's one key part that's important i always put my repeaters at a maximum delay that way um you don't get things overlapping each other like oh a signal from this interferes with my ability to do whatever i'm doing here with this latch it's just something that i do with all my builds when it comes to nor latches Something else, um, if you put this, like, say, up to a button, sometimes it doesn't hold its charge for whatever reason. When you are, uh, when, when it's hooked up to a button or something like this, when you also have it hooked up to another nor latch that won't activate when it's receiving a charge, i.e., like, me pressing this button here and it not and it not activating because it's hooked up to another one to prevent that you have to have in between inputs to make sure the input coming from 
one of these nor latches from not going backwards. Hence why this key repeater here is there to prevent that. The rest of these are to make sure that the redstone from this nor latch doesn't cross over into this signal. Is that off the one in the back? Because it falls back here and they're both connected while trying to do that. It won't work unless both of them can be activated and then your system's broken. Makes sense. But that's how it is. So here's pretty much a small version, but this is essentially just one combination. Anyway, I'm going to remove this. Well, that's it. That's how you make a Minecraft combination lock, a 2.0 version from the one I made years ago. Just want to say I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, taking the time to leave me any feedback about this. I am planning on making more videos now that I have a working PC and all that shit. Uh, just wondering... If you want to, what would you want to see with this? If you want to see more of this, I honestly, the server I'm on, just want to say thank you. I'm not like sponsored by them or anything like that, but uh, the fact that they actually have a server with pretty flaunt like this makes it easier, especially on my potato PC, so I wouldn't be able to do this. But yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I will see you guys most likely in another video. Have a good night, and don't forget to vote.